Hey, welcome to the Army Roundtable. Today is the 2nd of October, 2023, and a special guest, uh, two friends of mine, Amy Meisner and Scott Rubel, Stratagem. Um, I've known both for quite a while, and uh, they're they're both great traders, great friends, and uh, great educators, and uh, we're going to talk about collars today and coming up with a mini class this weekend over at Scott's site. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you, and, and welcome both of you. It's great to have you on together for this the first time. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying something new. Thanks, Tom. Thank, thanks, Tom. Yeah, this is yeah. going to be, I think. Okay, let's get started. Um, Did you do the disclaimer yet, Tom, or should I? You can. You usually have one. I figure that's yeah. good enough. Okay. There you go. That's good. Yeah, this just says we're giving out education, not advice. Just something our pesky attorneys demand of us. And when so, it says stratagem, remember stratagem, Aramir, and Amy Meisner. So it's all three of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whichever three of us has better lawyers, that's the one you got to adhere to. There you go. So, <laughs> 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 but as Tom said, we're having a a mini class this weekend. It's on the uh, it's on the seventh and the eighth Saturday and Sunday, and starts at nine a.m. Chicago time and ends at three p.m. And then there's actually going to be a third day about a month later that uh we're reserving just for people who have questions like every all the questions that get submitted to us we're just going to save up and create slides and have a, a bonus day on that and amy and i are doing this together and it's uh the first time my company's ever sharing the stage with anyone or i'm actually sharing somebody else's stage i don't know if amy's in charge or i am this is sort of a a joint venture, which is kind of fun for me. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Um, but we'll go into the details of what's in the class, but it's essentially everything you can imagine about collars. And Amy, you want to explain how this came about? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Scott. And um, just want to say uh, hi, everyone who's um, joining us today and welcome. I'm really happy you're able to make it. I know um, it's tough for a lot of people in their busy schedules. Um, so hopefully you made it live here today or you're going to watch it, watch the recording. Um, and so Scott and I, we thought it would be like kind of a great idea to just team up and offer a workshop together. Um, and we kind of talked back and forth a little while, tried to figure out what would be the best thing. And we think we came up with a really perfect subject. Um, you know, one thing is we wanted to address a particular need uh, that we've encountered as educators um, where at, at least I've known a lot of my students have approached me and they want to learn strategies beyond just trading the SPX and other indexes. And um, which is, you know, what I've been primarily focused on uh, in my teachings. And uh, we also recognized, um, you know, importance of making these strategies that we're going to teach accessible to traders of all levels. So we wanted to do that as well. So I think we've created something really special for every trader. And I'm really excited about this collaboration with Scott. It's really fun uh, to do to work with uh, someone else. And um, he's a great educator and has a great depth of knowledge when it comes to trading. So I'm really excited about working with him. And um, anyway, uh, just, uh, yeah, super excited about it. And together, we're going to show you how these strategies uh, can be, you know, pretty much a game changer for diversifying your investments and to capitalize on equity strategies. So uh so yeah, super excited about it, Scott. Uh, back to you. Thanks. And the logical question is why? Why are we teaming up? Why do we have this class? And why is this class so important to everybody? And we're a unique time in history where the average person has more equity in their retirement account than they do in their homes. And right now, since we are at the highest level of stock ownership in the hands of Americans since 2008, which is about 61% of the population. Now, people in my class and in Amy's class don't see a lot of stock trading with us because it's capital intensive and people are trying to learn how to trade and do a lot of zero DTE trades and things like that. But most people will also have a retirement account. It's one of the few ways in which you can delay or avoid or postpone whatever the proper word is taxes um and so especially in september with the big down month people have been asking me left and right again 
about how to protect stocks. When the market's going up, everybody is an expert on stocks. They'll go out and buy a stock and watch it go up 5%. And even if the market's up 20%, they're thinking, look at this, I'm a great stock picker. They're not even considering what the market as a whole has been doing. And it's months like September that uh, get people to realize, you know what, I, I need to brush up on how to protect my stock. And why is this, why is it so important for you to manage it yourself as opposed to a fund and say a, a mutual fund type situation? And people, my students at least, always hear me make fun of fund managers. Okay, and it's because really they they probably set out to try to beat the market and have a skill set, which is how they become so big. But eventually they become so big, their time is spent with lawyers, attorneys, accountants, and the big, big clients. And that's all they have time for. And most of the meetings are on golf courses and stuff like that, but it's still a meeting and that takes them away from the market. And that's why 82% of these guys fail to ever beat the stock market. And over the last 20 years, the NASDAQ has gone up 665%. The S&P has gone up 307%. And the DAX up 216%. Yet these guys can't keep up with that kind of returns. And most mutual funds don't ever beat the underline in which they're supposed to be mimicking because of the high costs associated with it, usually at least 2% somehow. So it messes up your compounding. And why not mutual funds? Warren Buffett has told people a million times not to get into mutual funds. And he actually had a bet with some friends where over a 10-year period, he said, any index is going to outbeat the best funds out there. And this friends and him had a bad name. You guys pick whatever fund you want. And at the time, Vanguard was the best performing fund out there. And so the friends picked Vanguard. And guess what? Vanguard was up 36.3% after fees. Okay, those guys, they make good money. And the S&P made 125%, almost 126%. The, the, just buying the S&P, buying stocks yourself, whatever it is, always beats these fund managers because they get their cut off the top. And it's usually the fund managers who make all the money. And so my students have always heard me just literally pont pontificating, just do it yourself. Even if you're just buying and hold a mutual fund, buying and holding a QQQ or an S&P is going to outperform. But then comes the fear when the markets like start falling apart, like in September. I mean, we went from 4,600 down to 4,200, and people started panicking. Then they're like, oh, you know what? I don't think I'm as good at hedging as I thought I was. So why is it so important to hedge these stocks or to collar these stocks? And most of it is you can enhance or do much better than the returns up here when you're hedged via risk reversals um, and all the different types of strategies we're going to be going into over the weekend. But every five years, we go into a recession. And right now, we're betting on the Fed's soft landing, the Fed that saw inflation as transitory after they didn't see it at all. And now they're saying it's going to be a soft landing when most of the intelligent people out there are saying they're going to have to force us into a recession to stop this inflation. So now's a good time to be hedged if you're not. I mean, we're up, what, 12% for the year? Lock those in. In the last 24 years, we've had three stock market crashes. 2000 with the dot-com bubble, 2008 with the housing crash, and then the pandemic of 2020. Okay, and, and it just tons and tons and tons of fear gets created when these markets crash, and people tend to sell instead of actually buying more, which is when they sh what they should be doing. And on average, a 10% drop in the stock market occurs every two years. That's a big drawdown that if you're not participating in it, you're you're 
profits are locked in. The market drops 10%. You sell out your hedges, reinvest your hedges, like we're going to be talking about this weekend. You're actually powering up your account. So in, how often do we have 10% drops in a day? People are forgetting it, but last year we were having them. We have a 10% drop almost every two years in one day. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to always be hedged. Anything can happen. Look at a chart. I don't know when the next crash is going to occur. This doesn't tell me anything. This is a chart of the S&P over the last 15 years. I can't make heads or tails out of it. Other than the tail end to the right. Over here, let me pull up my drawing tools. But over here... Why's the arrow not coming up? Maybe it's the wrong color. Over here, that big drop is what's got my students clamoring for more information on hedging collars, hedging stocks. Um, just last Friday, we saw someone do 41,000 risk reversals to hedge their portfolio. And I'm going to show you that as an example in the class this weekend. So it's these blips down that get people realizing, you know what? I'm not really hedging like I thought I was or hedging as well as I thought I was. And can clamoring for me to readdress the proper way to hedge stocks. Now, what is in this class? Okay, what's inside this two-day class that Amy and I are going to be co-hosting together? I'll let Amy start out with the first day, and then I'll go into the second half. All right, um, cool. So, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we're we're trying to put this thing together so that it's good for you know anywhere from the beginner to the advanced trader. So I really want to make sure that. Um, you know, I, I start off, I'm going to start off with these building blocks so that when we get to the more advanced stuff and Scott's going on and doing his um, more, much more advanced um, techniques for um, dynamic hedging and the five-year millionaire and everything, you're going to have a good foundation so that you understand that and you can actually take advantage of that. So, um, but um, as Scott mentioned, you know, there's, um, even if you think you understand callers and everything that leads up to them, you know, you probably don't, there's a lot to it. So um, like I said, I really want to start off with some building blocks. So what most people do, um, as you guys know, is to start off with uh, with a married put, right? And that's basically, you know, if you have a, if you have stocks or stock portfolio, you want to, um, you know, you don't want to maybe sell something out. Let's say you think something's going to go down. You want to have some kind of protection in place in case you think the stock's going to drop but you don't necessarily want to sell it out for tax purposes or something. So uh, married puts are, you know, um, are used to um, basically purchase a put as protection. So if the stock does drop, you're limited and you still, um, you know, can, can hold onto the stock and you're not losing any more money. Um, then there's the covered calls, which are super uh, popular. Uh, which a lot of people like to do because you want to make more money um, or make additional return from the stocks that you might own. Uh, so that you sell short calls against those. And then finally, if you combine the two together, uh, you have the caller. So you're basically enabling yourself to protect your stock position, but then also add some additional return other than just the dividends that you're getting from the stock or stock appreciation. So those are the... Um, the three basic, uh, you know, combinations or the two basic things com combining to make a caller. Um, but there's lots of ways to do this. Um, and as I said, this is, you know, created for traders of all levels. So I'll be going through the building blocks to help get a good understanding so that we can take it to the next level. And um, uh, then uh, Scott, of course, will will go into some more advanced stuff. So Scott's going to talk about that. Yeah. And, and thanks, Amy. Amy mentioned something really important here, and this is that you're looking at a married put, a covered call, and a collar. These are the building blocks of many 
different types of different hedges that you can use with stock and you can get unbelievably creative some people think they understand collars by just utilizing these three different tools and, and yes you are if you just only use these three you are hedging with a collar but are you picking the right expiration the right strike prices the right you know times to adjust the position so that's the that's really the key that's the cyclops's eye that's that's frankenstein's bolts in the neck of the strategy it's it's frankenstein's or uh dracula's fangs that's how to manage this is really the key part that everybody seems to be having the most trouble with anyone can slap on a hedge and if we fall far enough they're grateful they have it on, even if it's on at bad prices. But under normal circumstances, they go back and look and said, you know what? I should have done this or I could have done this better. And so Amy and I are going to be discussing the best strikes, expirations, when to get in, when to get out, when to roll, et cetera. And that's, that's really the benefit of this class. And then we're going to go into more complicated and detailed things. Some of my students are familiar with the five-year millionaire, which is just a collar turned inside out. It's literally folded inside out. And you're just adjusting the strikes around with a collar, with a traditional collar. You're buying a stock and hoping to make money on the stock. And the stock advancing is where the profit is created. The call and the put are just there to protect yourself. Well, with the five-year millionaire, it's inverted. We don't care what the stock does. We're trading the options. And this is where option traders have a huge benefit. If you're really good at options, you advanced guys are going to see the genius behind the five-year millionaire and that we're going to be making our money by selling premium. And the stock is just the hedge. So instead of trying to make money on stock, we're making money on the options with the stock as a hedge. It's a cool little thing. I'll explain a little bit more detail in a moment. We're also going to be talking about dynamic hedging, rolling this position every single month just to create a, a continuous stream of capital and an ability to move this hedge up and down as the stock moves up and down so it doesn't get taken away from you. And yet, when the market does drop, you can sell out your puts, use the capital and the profits from the put to acquire more shares. I mean, one of the guys I used to work with, Peter Rock, some of you guys are familiar with him from Optionetics. He, he took a million dollars, ran it down to $20,000 until he realized he didn't know what he was doing, took my class. I taught him collars. We became friends. And, and we became really good friends um, to the point where I actually hired him on to work for me because we had so much in common. He rides motorcycles. I ride motorcycles. He's a pilot. I'm a pilot. He hates his wife. I hate his wife. There, there, we had so much in common that we just started hanging out. But a lot of you guys heard from who attended Optionetics, Peter Ox, his name, where he took $20,000 and ran it up to a million dollars or $1.2 million dollars in some like three years or three and a half years and it wasn't because the stock went up it's the stock was just in a channel gyrating around and it was the hedging and adjusting of the positions that made the money and this is where most people are the weakest and then recently in this market drop a lot of students have said i want to get into this stock but i think it's going lower I don't want to start my collar right now. Is there something I can put in place as a placeholder in case the stock takes off? I don't miss the upside. But yet at the same time, if the market drops, I don't get the down, you know, I don't take the down um, P&L associated with the stock dropping or start out my collar in, in a negative situation. I want to start out on a positive foot. And so we've been doing placeholder trades in my class with like RTX, where we got long RTX, the stock fell 14% and we still made money, but it had it gone up, 
we would have just exercised one of the calls in the position to create the stock position and taken off from there. So we're going to be covering a lot of things. Amy can has you know something really cool she likes doing called the triple threat. You want to explain that a little bit? Uh, yeah. So basically, um, you know, as I'm going through the building blocks to you know, build your build your way up. Uh, to you know, have a good foundation for for the callers and so forth. I'm also going to be showing a way to kind of build up and a way to increase the returns more and more as we go along. So, uh, which is what what I call or we call the triple threat method, which allows you to basically reduce the cash that you need um, by utilizing calls instead of stocks. But it's also a combination of, of what Scott was mentioning earlier of picking the right strikes and the right expirations to use. Um, and rolling those in a campaign and, and continuing to pick the proper strikes and expirations so that you can increase the returns, not just because you're utilizing calls instead of stocks and not using as much cash, but because you're picking certain strikes and expirations that um, are going to benefit you the most. And that'll help to allow for those increased returns, you know, three three times, four times, or even more, depending on the stock and, and how it's moving and, and how much uh, premium you have in the uh, in the strikes, so um, that's that's uh, kind of uh, what the um, first day is kind of kind of build up into as to that strategy, and then uh, like like I said, um, we'll go on and start doing some more um, advanced uh, take take it from there and go even more advanced and get into the five year millionaire, which is what Scott's going to be talking about. Scott, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Amy. To reiterate what Amy said, you know, we're going to be starting out at the basics. There's going to be, th this is covering the whole alpha to omega. I don't care how good you are or how new you are. You're going to learn something here. And even if the, you know, some of my students have seen the five-year millionaire before, they're thinking, I know this stuff. No, you don't, you don't, you have not seen everything we have to show with collars. You're going to learn something new. And Amy's triple threat is a beautiful strategy. It sort of goes along with a buildup into the five-year millionaire, which is kind of a cool strategy I already mentioned. It's just like a collar, but we play in with the puts, and, we, and then we move the call around, and we're looking for option premiums over – the stock price and the stock is just a hedge. But what's really cool about it, and a lot of my students really embrace and do a lot of these things, is just the returns that you can make with these type of trades while still being protected. And their goal, and they're shooting for that Peter Ox return where it's the goal is compounding their interest every single month. And Albert Einstein once said, compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. And then throughout history, all the big, big fortunes in this world have been really made on banking and interest rates. You know, look at, you know, the Medici's and that from then on. Einstein actually said that he understands all the intricate motions of the universe, but he doesn't understand compounding interest. It, it baffles him and amazes him. And here's the how one can look at the goal of the five-year millionaire. If you start with $10,000 and get 10% a month over the course of five years, you end up with $3, uh, $3 million. Now, that is unbelievably lucky. I don't have students getting $3 million. Okay, they're trying to get 10% a month, but what happens? Some months, the market doesn't do anything. Some months, the market goes the wrong way. They're just trying to average where over five years, their $10,000 is making a million. Three million is high in the sky, but it's not realistic. But again, how many... We have a ten thousand dollar account. Ended up with a million dollars in five years. Would complain that they didn't get the three million. It's probably better than most people are doing right now. So 
when you think about collars, a lot of people have a graph in their head, especially the intermediate students who understand collars pretty well and understand it is very similar to a call spread. As a matter of fact, a collar is a synthetic call spread. You think of those graphs in your head and what a call spread looks like, and you think it's, it's pretty vanilla. But this is just one of maybe 20 different risk graphs of what you can do with a collar. They're very pliable. There's a lot of things you can do with it. At the top, you see the traditional collar. And what? A, if you didn't know this was a collar, you could easily mistake it for it being a call spread. The middle graph is the graph of what Amy's triple threat looks like. Look how cool this thing is. This thing is just unbelievably cool in that. Well, let me pull up a drawing tool so I can demonstrate. This is the zero line right here. The stock starting at 91. We don't really start losing money until 81. What is that, like a 12% drop in the stock? Yeah, you got this little tiny area where you can lose some money, but relative to your loss versus your gain, it's a huge risk-reward ratio. And you do have some tail risk, 10, 12, 15% out of the money, but anyone has been trading options for a little while knows that 12% out of the money put is dirt cheap. You could easily buy a garbage put and clean that up if you want it. Now, this is also, um, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, it's going to depend on the stock that you're trading and how volatile it is of how, how much, you know, far out of the money protection you're going to get. Um, but the nice thing about these, uh, you're probably, I, I'm sure you're going to mention it, but, um, but the nice thing about these is this is just what it looks like each time you do one. And it's meant to be done on a campaign where you're cycling through them and continuing um, on a campaign where you're collecting every week or every two weeks or every month, depending on how often you recycle this. So um, that's that's what makes it so powerful and and enables you to compound your account to to grow much larger and faster. Um, so I just wanted to interject that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks for the clarification. And then you go to the bottom one, five-year millionaire, and look at the zero line there. Okay, I, I think this graph speaks for itself. Okay, and we don't have to go into any more detail about it. That that graph really is pretty sexy. Okay, I, I'd rather have that graph than pizza, and pizza is my favorite thing in the world. So that is cool. So... One of the things that I'm really focusing on, and I know Amy is going to as well for her portion of the class, is the rolling of these collars. And that's really the tricky part. Anyone who trades, say, the SPX knows how much it costs to roll a, a vertical spread, an at-the-money vertical spread from one month to the next. If you're thinking of a collar as being a call spread, go boot up your brokerage account and see what it costs to move your at-the-money call spread or your out-of-the-money call spread from one expiration cycle a month out in time. And you'll see it's astronomical. You go 20 points, 30 points out of the money and take your vertical spread and say, you know what? I just need another month for this to come to fruition and make my maximum profit. I'm going to roll it from here to November 2nd expiration. And you're going to be paying a buck and a half. And then if the market sits and you want to roll again, you're going to have to pay another dollar and a half. And it gets pretty discouraging trading indexes where you're paying to roll and roll and roll. And nothing's happening. Well, you can think of a collar the same way. If you're not rolling a collar correctly, you're just continuously feeding it. And that's something you don't want to do. That's going to lower your returns on your, your your position over the long term. So 
the most important thing we're going to get out of this class, in my opinion, and the one that's neglected by almost every education firm out there is when to roll your collar. If the market moves higher, if the market stays flat, if the market falls, how do you deal with that? That is really the beast of the class. That is the meat of this class. Now, as far as questions are concerned, when do you roll is the biggest question I get. Okay, and Larry just came up with a question. Are these strategies adjusted rolled weekly or monthly? And we're going to be covering that. There's That's a very open-ended question that I wish I had a great little short answer to. It really depends on your objectives and what you're setting out to do. What kind of collar you have on? What's the stock like? Or is this a, in a Microsoft or is this a more aggressive stock? There's a whole bunch of criteria. And I know Amy is a big fan of recipes, criteria, step-by-step -step instructions, just like I am. So you can't just give a blanket answer. I wish I could just say, hey, are, we're going to adjust these things weekly. It really depends on, are we dealing with a married put, cover call, a collar, a triple threat, or a call instead of stock, a five-year millionaire. I know as far as the five-year millionaire is concerned, I'm rolling them weekly. That's, that's the key to the strategy is rolling them weekly. Other stocks, you're going to want to slap on for a month. You plan on holding them for a long, long, long time. You, you want your kids to sell them after you're dead. Those may be a different type of adjustment in a monthly adjustment or every six-week adjustment. And, and some of it's going to be contingent on your lifestyle, too. I, I'd say probably 30%, 40% of my students want longer-term hedges because they have real jobs. They're just doing this to ensure their financial future is solid. And that's what they're trying to learn. They're not sitting here trying to get rid of their day job. They love their day job. They just want to ensure that their assets are protected the same way they would buy insurance on their house or their car. And they don't want to be messing with it every week. Other people say, you know what? I've got plenty of spare time. I am happy to adjust every week if I can enhance my returns and double what I would normally be doing in terms of my expected returns, um, com you know, compared to if I was more laid back on this trade. So there's a lot of different factors to be taken into consideration, Larry, in order to answer that question. Okay, the other thing about this class that people have been asking about because they know me and I know Amy always does bonus stuff. I am, I'm a big fan of throwing out bonus stuff. Oh, I already mentioned that there's going to be a, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought I was talking before you started talking about this, but I realized I was on mute. Um, Alan. Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alan was asking a question. Um, I think he put it in the Q and a instead of in the chat. So you might not oh, have seen I didn't it. See it. I didn't a, see it. Yeah. Really important question. Um, okay. that I was trying to get across. And he was just saying, if you don't hold any equities, do you still recommend the class? And um, yeah, oh, that's so a great question. A great question. I'm going to let you go ahead now, because I think I kind of said something about it earlier, but I'm going to let you take your twist on it. Well, Amy and I probably have a different take on it. So you can hear Amy's, you know, tell me I'm stupid after I'm done giving my explanation. But no. I think... Even if you don't own stock, you're going to get benefit from it, from the understanding of the options or the stock substitute strategies, like Amy's triple threat, Okay, where the strategy involves an in-the-money call, which is unbelievably powerful because it's acting like a stock. Well, that can help even vertical spread traders because... Anyone, especially the zero DTE traders, understand that when you have an out on the money call and it's real close expiration, like the end of the day or tomorrow, time decay goes against you. If you have on a long call that's out of the money, I'll say it again, time goes against you. Time decay is a negative. It goes against you. But 
if you have an in-the-money call, that's exactly the same amount in the money as the out-of-the-money call you would have bought. Now time decay is in your favor. So it does help with vertical spreads and other things. But my take is, or explanation is if you ever want to own stock in the future, start learning the stuff now before you actually start throwing money into the ring. Okay? And, and one of the only tax benefits we have left in this country is retirement accounts. If you're an independent contractor, you can get kios and all kinds of things where you can really pack in huge amounts. As a matter of fact, traders get uh, exemptions from the limits because they're considered a, a shorter career, like an NFL football player or a baseball player. And you can really load up tax-deferred retirement accounts under kios and um, different retirement vehicles where you can put away 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a year without paying taxes. Some of the limitations on those accounts are that you have to own equities, especially depending on what broker you use. Um, I know the overseas brokers have a lot more restrictions than somebody like think or swim or tasty. Um, but if you ever want to own stock, it's a must. If you're trading verticals, though, it's going to help. Um, any other things you want to add to that, Amy? Um, yeah, I do. I do want to add a little bit. Um, uh, I kind of maybe touched on it a little bit earlier, but, you know, a lot of my students have been asking me about diversifying. So I think like, you know, one thing that I really like about this is it's a great way of diversifying your portfolio. If it doesn't, you don't have to have stocks, but if, you know, like most of my trading strategies involve trading in the indices, I usually like the Russell 2000 and the SPX. And this is a great way to kind of diversify out of that and learn strategies that involve stocks, but you don't need to own the stock. So um, which is, you know, like the triple threat or, um, you know, calls instead of stock, what that enables you to do is maybe there's some stocks either either that you, you know, maybe you have a small account, in other words. So this is great, I think, for smaller accounts that don't even hold any stocks. But maybe it's something that you want to do in the future. Uh, this is a good way to um, uh, accumulate stocks, even small amounts, or maybe you don't want to own any stocks at all. Um, the methods that we're going to be showing you um, are ways of taking advantage and diversifying using, you know, stocks as your underlying, but without actually having to lay out the cash and own the stock. So there's lots of different ways to go about this. So it's it's really, really set up whether you have a big account and a big stock portfolio or you have a small account um, or and don't even want to own stocks or maybe you want to own some in the future. It's pretty much going to go through and show all of these different methods so that you can take advantage of that as well. So it's a great, like I said, it's a great way to diversify, which is something that a lot of my students have been asking me about. And I know that there's a lot of newer students that I have that have smaller accounts um, and that are also newer to options. It's just, a, it's a really important um, strategy to learn. Um, and some of the things that you're going to learn in this class, especially some of the advanced um, hedging techniques and so forth are actually going to be kind of eye openers for other strategies that you might be doing. There's, there's always going to be something in there that you say, hey, you know, maybe I can use this little portion of this strategy for another strategy that I'm working on. So there's going to be some good nuggets of um, insight as far as that's concerned as well. Uh, and then uh, I think there was another question that kind of. Yeah, I saw uh, two questions come in. If you want me to take one of them. Sure, go ahead. Heads or tails, which one you want? The first one uh, or I the second I one? I just want to see. Oh, <laughs> there was one question I wanted to answer. I know it's kind of out okay. of order, but I saw this one come up from Larry about is this kind of like the wheel strategy? And I just wanted to answer that. Sure. Uh, it's the wheel strategy is basically kind of like a cash secured put and then going into like a covered call campaign. Um, that is one of the um, strategies that I will be showing, but it's just a little part of uh, the many different things that we're going to be showing in in here as well. There's so many different ways of tackling it. So I did want to let you know that th that'll be discussed, but it's not the only thing. Yeah. And, you know, th that's an interesting thing too. I mean, everybody's so 
accustomed to buying puts. But Warren Buffett sells puts to get into stocks. Mm -hmm. If you look at his his you know financials, the man is a big, big, big option trader. Most of his money's coming from the options, not the stocks. And he sells huge blocks of puts to get into stocks. Um, and if the puts go out worthless, it's an enhanced return on his portfolio. Well, I don't sell puts per se. I prefer to sell wide put spread so there's at least a defined risk and it's a reduced margin. And that's one of the entry points for the five-year millionaire, actually, okay, which is selling a put spread. Okay, anything that we would normally sell with a collar, we will be buying anything we buy, we we sell. It, it, it's it's in, folded inside out. It's kind of cool. But one of the entryways of the five-year millionaire is actually to sell a wide put spread. Now, I guess you could sell a, a, a naked put if you're opposed to buying a, a protective put for a nickel to reduce your margin and have a finite risk of, you know, stock possibly gap into zero overnight. I don't do it. I'm always selling put spreads, but yeah, it, it's actually a very, very powerful way of actually entering into stocks. Now, another question came in is, can we do this on an index? Indexes by nature are less volatile than stocks. They have lower volatility. So I think you were referring to the five-year millionaire. So I'm answering it that way. With regard to the five-year millionaire, we're, it's geared towards equities. You will lower your returns by going in an index because index options trade on a lower volatility because they have one less risk associated with them than a stock. When you're dealing with the stock market, you're dealing with two kinds of risk. Systematic and asystematic, or also known as non-systematic risk. Systematic risk is the risk of the market as a whole. If the market's crashing, I don't care how good your stock is, it's going to get dragged down. People are liquidating everything, the good stocks and the bad stocks, and it's going to get dragged down. That's systematic risk. Asystematic risk is company-specific risk. The market, the market can be taken off to the upside like you've never seen before. And yet this couple stocks are just getting pounded into the ground that no matter how strong the market is, these stocks can't stay buoyant. They just sink like rocks because they're a poorly run company. The CEO that made the company is retiring. There's accounting irregularities, whatever. Some news that's specific to that one company is taking that stock down. That's asystematic risk. So because stocks have two kinds of risk and an index only has one kind of risk, the indexes are less volatile. Your returns will be muted. They will be halved, roughly, in an index. But it's still cool. It's still better than what most people are doing, right? So, yes. Another one. Scott, do you use a spreadsheet to choose a position of five-year millionaire trade? Yes. Yes. Yes, I still use it. Has it changed recently? It has changed a little bit. It's all, I would say it's probably 90% the same as the past. The spreadsheet now does the math for you, so you just type in stuff, and it just spits out the answer. It's also multilingual. I have a lot of people in Europe, especially Italy, so it's done in Italian and English. Um, so you click on the Italian tab or the English tab, and it comes up that way. Um, it hasn't changed that dramatically. The managing of the position has been improved a little bit just because of more experience with it. Okay. Are you talking about substituting long in the money leaps around 70 delta instead of stocks? 
Um, I'll take that. First okay. of all, there's a whole science. It's not art. It's really science to substituting call instead of stock. You're trying to get something that's the reason to use a call instead of stock is a it's got the find risk. It's lowering your cost of entry by. 50 to 80 percent, depending on the strike you choose and how volatile the stock is. When matched up with puts, you actually create a synthetic strangle. So if the market crashes, you're actually making money on the downside, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the key to it is the time premiums. If you're going to be buying a call instead of a stock, you are reducing your cost, you're reducing your risk, but you're picking up a different kind of risk in that you're going to be buying a little bit of time premium. So one of the selective criteria involved in choosing the strategy is making sure whichever call you choose is a fair balance between how many deltas that call has and its time premium. And that's a really important selection. Anyone who's ever bought a call spread and watched the stock go up and still lose money because the stock didn't go up enough, it just ate up all the time value, knows the strike selection of a call spread is really important. I mean, look at today. The SPX closed at what? 42.88. If you had the 80.85 on, that's a lot different than owning the 90.95 today. So the same thing applies when you're using call instead of stock, and the selection of that strike is, is unbelievably crucial. And we're going to go into the science behind it. Okay, now another question is, is it possible to implement the five-year millionaire plan with the stock substitute in the money call strategy? Absolutely. Um, you may get... That's a great question. You may get assigned on your stock or on your short puts to where you end up in long stock. You can always swap it out the next day or the day of expiration if you're anticipating being assigned, which you know you are, right? If it's in the money, just swap it out with a call, a long in the money call, and then go to the next step using a call and pretending it's stock. Absolutely correct, Roger. You can certainly do it. Do you need to be bullish on these st stocks to do trades? No. No, especially the five-year millionaire works out best in a non-directional move market. Um, you know, covered calls do well in non-directional markets, especially in high volatility situations like right now, right? Right now, volatility is a little high. The VIX is pushing 18. The market's kind of just beating around. Anyone who's in a covered call maybe sweating a little bit because it looks a little scary out there. Looks like the market could, the bottom could fall out of the market at any moment, but it's not, it's, it's holding up for now, but the calls you're selling are getting twice the premium. They were say a month ago. So you could call this market situation nervously neutral and realize you're making decent money in it. Now, there are going to be a couple of strategies to discuss this weekend where it's just market neutral opinion on the market. Another question. Great question. Question is, most hedging strategies I've seen require a fair amount of capital related to the size of the portfolio you are hedging. Is that the case with these strategies as well? And again, it can be. In all fairness, you own stock. You're eating up a lot of capital. And that's why Amy, for the most part, doesn't trade a lot of stock, at least in our trading account. I don't trade a lot of stock in my trading account. I do in my retirement account, but not in my trading account. I, I will to get creative or short term to like hedge when I see the stock is a 
a quicker, better, faster, more profitable hedge than a call or a put or a vertical spread would be. But I'm not going out of my way to tie up capital, especially in this high interest rate environment. But you can always substitute that out with like the call instead of stock or the triple threat or whatever. Oh, does the hedge require a lot of capital? No. I mean, that that's the whole purpose of cashless collars. Um, Warren Buffett, I think, I was on the other side of a lot of his trades for a lot of years. Somebody really big that matched up a portfolio about the same size as Warren Buffett's would come in often into the SPX pit and do these weird trades where he'd be buying 68,000 of these and selling 22,000 of these and 82,000 of these and 15,000 of these and 100 of these and 61 of these. And it's like weird, weird positions. But when you did the math and you looked at the notional value of the hedge that they were buying, it came out to be dollar neutral. I mean, it was unbelievable. They would trade billions of dollars in notional value, but the actual premium outlay would come down to almost nothing. Okay. Now, let's. I don't see any more questions. Do you have any more on your end, Amy, that I'm not seeing? Uh, no, I don't see anything. I think you got them all. There was, let me just see. And nope, he moved that over to the chat. So there isn't any other questions there. So no, I think we're good. Okay. So I was just talking about the bonus material and Amy and I have not set a date yet for when we're going to have the three days of Q and a, but it gives you a chance to take the class, digest it, watch it, play with it. Um, I'm probably going to do a three-year millionaire or five-year millionaire or a seven-year millionaire with indexes. Um, three-year millionaire is really risky. You're, you're playing with like pharmaceutical companies that, you know, have just crazy premiums and I stay away from them, but I'm not afraid of demonstrating them because it is a hedged position. Some people love the extra premiums, but um that being said i'm planning on doing one of them as early as this week and maybe one next week that i'll be happy to when i do it send out to everybody who's participating in the in the class but the bonus class will be next month we haven't set a date we're going to go off of the date based on amy's schedule and when uh cuz she's kind of busy next month but We'll get it in there, okay? She, you're her first priority, and it gives you a chance to write in questions and us to do a good job answering them. We can write back one sentence, two cents, three cents answers. But that doesn't, some of these questions that come in are very well thought out and best served when you have a great answer with a lot of slides and a detailed explanation. And so the question and answer part is going to be really powerful. Um, the other bonuses that are coming in to this session. I, uh, just one quick thing. I just yeah. Before we move on, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I guess you could have answered it afterwards. But I guess we did miss one question that we didn't see from Jason Wong. Um, oh, okay. Do you want to take that? He asked if uh, you can you apply collar roll techniques to roll vertical spreads, um, like bull. Yeah, it's the same principle because guess what? Synthetic uh, vertical spread is a collar, and a collar is a synthetic, you know, vertical spread. I mean, it's the, the they had the same PNL graph; they're interchangeable. So, um, it will definitely assist in other trading even if you're not trading stocks. 
anything you want to add to that, Amy? I, I didn't want to say, I, I was no. a little hesitant because I didn't know if I was stepping on your answers. No, no, no. I, I think you, I think you kind of, I thought you kind of talked about it earlier, but then he, he uh, mentioned in the chat that he, his question wasn't answered. So I just wanted to make sure that. Oh, okay. Forgetting okay. about him. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I just didn't want to step on you. No, no. And then there was one more. I think he's asking about the five-year millionaire. You just came in about how much initial capital to implement the strategy to meet the goal of turning into a million. I guess it just depends on um, how long well, you want it to take. Yeah. I mean, you can really customize that in a million different ways. That's what's so great about the strategy. Um, and you have a you have a, a spreadsheet to kind of help do all the calculations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would say $5,000 is the minimum to start with. Now, when you go off of compounding, the more you start with, the faster you, you know, you start really building steam. But, you know, 5,000 is a minimum. I would say 10,000 makes it comfortable. Okay. And that's because we are going to be selling vertical spreads as part of the strategy that is going to require margin. Um, we're going to own stock as little as possible. But this can be done in low cost stocks. This can be done in your fifteen dollar stocks, as as much as it can be done in your four hundred dollar stocks. Now, obviously, if you're trading a four hundred dollar stock, you're a sign on stock, and you get a thousand shares of a four hundred dollar stock, you're going to have a margin call if you don't have adequate capital. But most people will just meet that margin call by closing out the stock and buying a call instead. A deep in the money call but now when you're dealing with a deep in the money call on a 400 dollars stock you're talking about a lot more capital than you would on a 50 dollars stock most of my students are playing this with somewhere around a 40 dollars stock it's usually 20 30 40 dollars is the sweet spot of what they like to play with just because they sometimes get assigned on the stock if you then flip it to a call instead of a stock, $40 stock, you, you'll need about $10,000 in margin. A $20, $25 stock, $5,000 in margin to get started in a big way. Now, obviously, you can spend an extra. If you don't have that kind of money, you can go. You only have five grand. You're not going to trade as many contracts. You scale down in size, which you should do when you're learning a new strategy anyways. And it'll just take you an extra year to achieve your goal. It is generating 100% of your capital in a year. Is it realistic? Some years it is. Some years it's not. I don't want to overpromise. Um, you know, you shoot for the stars, and if you only hit the moon, you're doing pretty good. Um, I've had students that hit the mark. Others fall short. Others, um, you know, I'm trying to be as honest as I can about this. Um. The goal is 10% a month. I would say 5% is a very realistic goal, which is still better than most people are doing, right? What's the market up this year? What fund managers are making 50, 60% a year? None. If I could find a fund manager making 30% a year, I'd probably take a year off now and then. It, it, it's crazy incredible. Now, you're going to have periods where it's two steps forward, one step back, you know, and you get some losses because the market just keeps nailing, doing the absolute worst possible thing you can. It happens, right? Nothing ever works out perfectly. There is no perfect strategy. But this is what Peter Ox is doing, essentially to get his returns. Okay. I don't want to overpromise. Okay. Now, 
other things that are included, and and this is important before we go on, um, because this comes out, this will freak you guys out when you first see it. When you enroll, it's already set up in the system that as soon as you're enrolling, you're going to get bombarded with the call instead of stock ebook. Okay, that's like 30 pages. It all of a sudden just shows up in your email. You're going to get PDFs. You're also going to get um, the five-year millionaire. It's a 45-page write-up and spreadsheet. That shows up immediately. Don't start doing it until you take the class and see me walk through the example one time or a couple times. And um, you know what? I, I, I've taught this strategy before in my company. Anyone that enrolls, I've done pot classes on them, 90-minute pot classes on just this strategy. It's not part of the package that Amy and I are offering here, but if Amy doesn't mind, I will be happy to include as another bonus a pot class on the Five Year Millionaire where we just went into it in detail for 90 minutes, and that'll be another bonus if Amy's okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. Okay. We'll, we'll, if, this, if the Five Year Millionaire is something you guys are really interested in, you not only get a 45 page book on it on how it works you get a spreadsheet where you can type the numbers in and it and i'll share that spreadsheet with with tom we'll work on it together if tom wants to do it i know he's the spreadsheet god um i'd be happy to help you know yeah. he can add it to his stuff but um also um i'll throw in a pod class where we talk about it for 90 minutes that and, um, as an extra uh, as an extra bonus um scott uh because yeah. somebody's asking this and i i um, i'm pretty sure uh like for the five-year millionaire one of the things that i think you like to do is have like more volatile high momentum type stocks um and somebody was asking would that apply to apple nvidia amazon those types of stocks yeah so well you're going to you know you're getting the nvidia's and amazon's and stuff like that it definitely works it's just going to be higher capital because you're playing with big, big, big stock prices, mm -hmm. right? They're, I mean, they're like, those are like index prices, right? They're yeah. the same, the prices, the SPYs. So they're going to eat up some more capital, but you just do less contracts, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, 10% of a $10 stock is a thousand shares is the same as 10% of a hundred dollar stock 10 times, you know? So you're looking for the percent return of whatever the value of the stock is. It is difficult. Is it difficult to find candidates that aren't in biotechs? I don't like doing biotechs. You can find a million biotechs that fit the criteria immediately. The more conservative the stock, the lower your return will be. Okay, biotechs, I can find 20% returns in biotechs all over the place, not 10%. Um, so I can find candidates that fit this criteria. No problem. Um, biotechs are the easiest to find because they just trade at crazy volatility levels. Um, if you want to go into something really slow moving stock like Disney and stuff, you're going to lower your returns. You're not going to get 10% in Disney. Okay. Disney is, well, up until recently, it was just a stock with a, a nail in its foot and just kept walking in circles. Um, now it's getting slammed, but until recently, it didn't move. So you're not, where's Disney going to be next year? Same price it is right now. That's what people used to think about Disney. Now Disney's moving because of all the politics stuff going on. But the lower the volatility of the stock, the lower your returns are going to be because we're collecting the money from the premiums. Okay, did I say we we're supposed to receive the bonus books yet? I didn't receive them. The system was just set up like right before the class started. Anyone who signed up, 
I will, after this class, I will make sure that Glenda sends the stuff out. And if she's not working, I'll make sure Paolo does. Um, it was set up for anyone that enrolled from this point on. Um, so I don't know about anyone who enrolled yesterday or two days ago and five days ago. But you're definitely entitled to it. And I'll make sure you get it by the end of the day. Okay. And a link to the pot class too. Now I've taught the five-year millionaire several times in pot class. I'm going to go and review a couple different pot classes to see which one is the most representative of a true pot class. Because sometimes I'll do the five-year millionaire and someone asks about biotechs. And then someone asks about a slow moving stock and getting not 10% a month, but 5% a month that they can sleep with. And so every time I've taught it, I've taught it a little bit differently based on what the students want. I'll find one that's indicative of the template of the strategy and then send that out maybe tomorrow or the next day as soon as I have a chance to review a whole bunch of different classes and see which one's the best. But you'll well, be Scott, getting... There, there yeah. may be people watching who don't know what POT is. Oh, POT? POT is my weekly class i wasn't trying to make a plug on it so but it, it's my weekly class that i have every wednesday night at seven o'clock central time um starts at seven usually ends at nine or a little bit before it's a 90 minute class but i usually go over and it's just literally every strategy that the students want to, they send me in requests and then i address it and occasionally I'll find a topic that, or the students will find a topic that I'm not the most proficient at, like Black Shoals. I've done it. I know how it works. I can work through it on a pencil. Talking about it and teaching it in the class like a math professor. I've got friends. I teach at Northwestern. i got friends at Northwestern who are much more proficient of explaining this complex formula very simply. I'll defer out to them. Or ratio spreads. One of my um, partners, Robert Chastain, he's known for ratio spreads and rolling ratio spreads. He will often pop in and talk about those. But essentially, it's my class every Wednesday, and then I follow up with daily trades. Wow, well, you guys are seeing questions. I'm not. You're looking at the Q and A. Yeah, on okay. the webinar chat. Oh, no, there's another one called Q and A. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm still new to the Zoom stuff. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know there were two different question windows. Okay. So, yeah, the reiterate, I'll, I'll get the pot class on or the seminar class on Five Year Millionaire out to everybody. You'll also get immediately the five year. Well, this is what Glenda just sent me right before the class started. This is what people's emails are going to look like. Class links to come on October 6th. So, the links to getting into the class for Saturday and Sunday will come out Friday. And then the ebooks, call instead of stock, five year millionaire, five year millionaire example, and the spreadsheet will all be coming immediately. Also, anyone that's seen the flyer realizes that September 30th was the deadline for early registration, but anyone in Air Mirror is exempt from that. That's your sign up bonus for being with Air Mirror. You're exempt from it. You get the old price of six forty nine instead of the new price at seven forty nine, and that goes for Amy's students as well. Anything you want to add to that, Amy? Nope, that was um, perfect. Looking forward to it. I think I busted Amy eating. 
I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> she eating your pizza there, Tom. <laughs> She's got your pet. Uh, pizza she, has, she hasn't tried well, my you know, pizza I yet. You're going to ramble on and on. I wasn't sure how long you were going to ramble, ramble on, and on, on and on. You know what? This dissolves our partnership right here. <laughs> <laughs> ramble on and on. I can I talk to I my. Had, I thought I had a. I thought I had a few. I can call my ex-wife life. to get this kind of love. Uh, so I'll be kind. Don't ramble me. on and on. That's usually what they say about me. So, okay, be able to pass that on sometimes. I'm any, kidding. Any questions I'm missing, Tom? I think you got them from what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm waiting for the third question window. I don't see. Nope, there's no third one. <laughs> <laughs> but right here is the outline of the the class, the general outline, a much more detailed line outline will be given the day of the class of everything you can expect of the syllabus if you will um so if there's something in there that you're looking for that's not on this don't worry it's probably included if it's anything related to collars is that spreadsheet in there i don't see it on your list it's on the list right back here right oh um, it's not on that one okay it is on this one where if you go let me show you where it's at right here at the bottom i'm your millionaire worksheet i don't know why the girls call it worksheet i guess because there's work on it but it's a spreadsheet yeah, it's either a workbook or a spreadsheet, but yeah, whatever. it's I don't know. It's an Excel file. Right? It's an Excel <laughs> file. Yeah, with <laughs> with instructions though. It's not just, you know, there's detailed instructions on it. Okay, Sounds guys. Good. Okay, well. All right. I, I want to thank everybody so much for their attendance. If you have any other questions, just send them out to Amy or myself or time and we'll be happy to answer them for you absolutely looks like a great class and uh starts on saturday so you still have a few days to make a decision but um i wouldn't wait too long just it's uh you know just sign up and you don't have to worry yeah, about my last class access sold to everything. Out. my last class sold out we couldn't take any more people so uh strike while the iron is hot as they say yeah. and amy i think it's bigger crowds than me I must be doing something right. So yeah, yeah. All I, right. I guess I gotta get a pizza while teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Tom is definitely the pizza master. I hear. So. You know what? No, you know what? The most impressive thing from Tom is not that he was a fighter pilot. Anyone can do that, right? Lot, many if, have, if you watch yeah. an officer and gentleman, you figure out how to become a fighter pilot in the military. You just got to cry yeah, a lot plain until they give X you your wings. You'll be, you're good. Yeah. yeah, you just cry a lot until they give you your wings. What's impressed me about Tom is he's lost, what, 36 pounds on a pizza and ice cream diet? No, 26 this oh, year. Oh, 26. And, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 26 more to, more, on a pizza more and ice cream diet. I you don't lost just weight eat on that. A on I, that diet? Yeah, I oh, told no. him he's, he's an idiot. I told him he's an idiot. <laughs> he's stupid trading for a living. You, you write a book on how to lose 26 pounds eating pizza and ice cream, you'll be a billionaire. Well, that's not all I eat, but it, you know, it's uh I eat it once in a while, everything in moderation. I don't understand that word. So <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap it up and uh everybody is uh, go sign up for the class because it's uh, going to be a good one. Uh, Amy and Scott, thank you so much for coming. Always appreciated, and they're always welcome. Uh, Scott, you're welcome to come back. Amy's running a great trade alert service, the A14. If you haven't seen that, it's uh, really, really impressive. And the A14 workshops are also very popular. So um, lots of great materials and learning things. Um, but this one for the, the collar class, different orientation, but really nice returns. And uh, I think everybody would enjoy it. So I uh, really appreciate you bringing it here and telling everybody about it. So thanks. Thanks again for coming. Thanks so much, Tom and Amy. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, Scott, for uh, doing this with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
And thanks all for, right. for uh, joining the, the uh, round table today. I appreciate you oh, guys and, all checking and, it out. And Tom has copies of the slides if you want them. Yep. I will post that with the recording. Thanks so much, right. guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.